Okay folks, uh, this is Brian Meek with New Concepts. Today we're going to talk about the titanium soldering strips. Uh, this is going to be kind of a quickie little how to bend them kind of a tutorial and a basic overview. When you get them, what you've got are little titanium strips. They're about 3 16 by 4 inches. And the reason we don't sell them pre-bent like these guys are is because we don't have any idea what you're going to want to do with them. And the whole point is to try and get to, to make the thing that you need to do whatever job it is you need to do. Uh, and we have no way of knowing what that is. Uh, so we don't do them pre-bent. Uh, the other thing you need to know about them is don't try to anneal them. They're already as annealed as you're going to get when they're fresh out of the bag. Titanium is not like a normal jewelry metal. Um, it is, well, it is a particularly weird critter all on its own, but the way normal metals anneal won't do anything to titanium. Um, it is one of what they call the reactive metals, and when it gets hot, it reacts with things like, say, oxygen and nitrogen, and it gets brittle. So instead of getting soft when you heat it up, it gets hard. Uh, it doesn't get so brittle that you can't flex it to make a clamp or to make your clamp work, but it does get so brittle that you can't then take a straight strip and bend it, you'll just break it. So you need to preform them before you fire them the first time. Uh, so in aid of that, what you want to use are basic hardware store pliers. Uh, do not take your good little jewelry pliers and try and use those because you're just going to bend them. Uh, or you won't have enough torque on your hands to bend the things into whatever you want to do. So what I do for basic things like this is these are just needle noses I grabbed out of the garage. Uh, there's nothing special about them. Uh, you can see they've still got the, the teeth on them. That's useful. But to bend a shape like this guy, this is kind of a good all-around uh, all around sort of a shape, you always start from the outside and work your way in. So I'm going to take this and burn, bend out a little bit and bend a little bit and all I'm doing is just using the whole length of my hand and just twitch a little bit and then twitch down and I'm working in because that way I still have the rest of the length of the piece of metal to use like a handle. So now I've got it like this and that's a pretty decent little little clampy thing and you'll see people on online talking about how you can't get them to close, which is true. You can't. If you go like this, you are never going to get these things to close. You just can't. The metal has a spring, has spring back, and it will never, ever close. So what you do instead is you work the tangents. So you grab it like this. So I'm coming from here to there, and you pull back. This is where the teeth on the hardware store pliers are handy and where jewelry store pliers or jewelry pliers don't work. So you come back like so and then you do the same thing over here. Come on. There you go. Like so. And a little bit more of a crunch there. And now it gives a good solid grab. So you can see that, you know, now they're together where there's just no way on earth you were ever going to get it going this way. The other thing you can do is ring bending pliers. These are the old standby. If you're if you're a far if you're far enough along in your jewelry career that you're buying titanium strips of soldering clamps, you need one of these anyway. Uh, as they're sold, they come like this. Uh, these are my my old pair from when I was a bench monkey. First thing you do when you get them is you make yourself a little copper shield that protects the metal you're working on from the steel jaws. So you put that in there like so. And now if you want to bend bend these guys with the titanium, you just go crunch and they bend right over. Um, I'm going to bend this down here. These guys are also really, really useful for saying, you know, when you're doing jewelry work, to saying to a piece of wire, you will bend right here, right now, this way, because I say so. And they're tremendously useful for making any weird little clamp that you need. 
I'm not sure what that would do, but there you go. There's four little 90 degree bins with just, you know, crunching my hands. And these guys run about 15 bucks uh, for the cheapy import ones. They're really not that expensive. Uh, so if you don't have them, you can get them from any of the big suppliers. Um, there are a variety of useful shapes. Uh, this one, I'm going to show you a trick with this in a second. This one was originally something I uh, built for a student for holding a bale onto a bezel. So the, be the bale slips on here and then this thing comes up underneath the bezel. This is a reproduction of it and it's not quite closed yet. So I could come in with my little tangent technique and crunch it or I can take the ring closing pliers and go squish, squish, and if I have to, I can come into the middle of the bend and crunch that down. The thing about the titanium clamps is they don't have to be pretty. They have to be clamps. Um, you can make them as pretty as you like. The photos that we use in some of our uh, literature are from a guy named James Miller who is a lifelong, world-renowned British goldsmith. I don't think he could make ugly if he tried. Um, so his are beautiful, and I love the pictures, and I respect the hell out of them, but they don't have to be that nice. Um, so you can do, you know, this is a kind of a crude little thing, but it works. You know, this one is good for holding a bezel onto a plate. All it is is just a little pointy thing that holds down. One thing you should do with them is point the ends. You notice that this guy has been come to, taken down to a point so that there's very minimal contact between the titanium and whatever it is you're trying to solder. That way, even though titanium itself has a lousy heat transfer rate and it won't, it won't suck heat from your pieces, if you minimize the contact, it, you, you're minimizing the, its opportunity to pull heat away from you. So for things like this, you know, these guys, come here, you. these guys are good for pretty much hanging on to anything. Like this, for example, let's pretend that this Allen wrench is an earring post. Well, okay, so here's your little piece, and you set it up like that, boom, you can solder it, quick and painless. Um, let us pretend, like I said, this one is for, for doing bezels onto things. This one was for a... a a bale onto a bezeled pendant. There's a variety of different things that you can do with them, but we have no idea, no way of knowing what you're, you're going to want to need to do, which is why we don't sell them pre pre bent. Um, so the big things are, you know, use big heavy pliers to bend them. Uh, you know, ring closing pliers, hardware store pliers. If you have to, there is no shame in putting them in a vise and just smacking them with a mallet. That'll work too. Just leave the end of them stuck up from the vise and just go crunch and bend them over. Um, the big size of uh, parallel action pliers work well. Any of those things will do you. Um, if you have other questions, you can always reach us through the website. Uh, the address is uh, www.newconcepts.com. Uh, the email is info at newconcepts.com. Either one of those works. Uh, and we'll be happy to help you out. I hope this, is, uh, I hope this has helped you. Just remember, don't try to anneal them. Uh, use big tools, and you can do this. Thank you.